Ian Campbell, I'm the founder of AIR. We're a software company. We build digital employees for the real estate industry. Unfortunately, there's, it's easy to get sucked into the, to the next software as a service subscription. So what an audit does is it kind of allows you to add up the cost of your technology stack, we call it technology stack. I'm going in, making a list of what every piece of software or tool that you have, how much it costs you, and then evaluating it in terms of what benefit it provides, and also whether or not you're extracting the value that you should be. And it's a really simple process. You can save thousands, and uh, if nothing else, you might actually use something you've already got a bit better. I think the technology you use, the first indicator, if you haven't used it, a bit like clothes when you go and clean out your wardrobe, if you just get rid of it, you're obviously not investing the time or the energy to get any value out of it. So that's number one. If you don't use it, get rid of it. Second thing is diarise the time to get to know and, and actually document what the benefit you expect is from that particular product. Unfortunately, a lot of the enterprise solutions that we use are not user friendly, so they do require training. The second thing is training is often expensive, and most businesses will only invest in training when they first buy a piece of software. You generally get the person who, who uh, learnt the software first to train the next person, to train the next person to train. And what you get is you get a dilution of knowledge. You make sure you've got a continuous, continuous investment uh, into the technology that you buy, and I always recommend a training budget. Take in your technology audit, whatever you're spending on technology, you know, I would recommend at least 20% of that goes back into ongoing development and training for your staff. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. If you think about the software that you know, uh, be it an app or a website, that has what's called a user interface, it's clickable, you interact with it as a, as a user, as a human being. What an API is, is it's an interface that a computer can interact with, so it allows uh, a piece of software to talk uh, between each other. And it does two things, one is it generally allows transfer of data and information, but also it can allow the uh, you know, software A to use the functionality in software B. Why is that important as well? Because all of a sudden when you get two pieces of software that talk to each other and leverage each other's functionality, you get uh, an exponentially better benefit and result. There was a documentary by the ABC called The AI Race, uh, which tried to analyse the percentage of different jobs that can be automated in the future. Luckily, for the real estate industry, they reckon it's only about 9%. Uh, I think that's probably undercooking it a bit. Now, if you look at what the industry is doing today, a lot of the bigger agencies are trying to achieve economies of scale through uh, outsourcing. Effectively, what they look like is their administrative processes, pushing data, pushing paper, pushing you know, very simple, simple business processes that ultimately can be automated in the future. Where it gets really exciting is when we start to talk about artificial intelligence and how that will drastically improve the capability or the capacity of automation for different business processes because often those business processes require decision making. Decision making is where AI comes in. What we're going to see, what AI does is it, is it frees up our ability to make decisions as human beings. So a lot of what we do every day is make decisions based off what we know uh, and our experiences in life. What AI can do is it can accumulate knowledge sets and experience from the entire human history at scale and then make those decisions to a reasonable degree of accuracy on our behalf. So all of a sudden if we're not required to make decisions for the mundane, for the things that we already know how to solve, then uh, we can start to focus on the next big problems.